Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. This channel is all about learning Swift and Swift UI. And in this playlist, we're going to add on to that and learn how to use Git and source control. Now, this is something that is absolutely a requirement and crucial for all software engineers. This is something that when I was learning to code, I put off for a long time. I didn't think I really needed it. And that's primarily because when you're learning to code, you're mostly just working in projects by yourself, right? You know all of the code changes that are happening and you know how to save your project. And you're probably not working on a big project over the course of several years. But as you start getting into a more professional environment, the requirement of source control becomes more and more important. First and foremost, source control gives us a backup. We can save all of our code to the cloud, to GitHub, and this way, if something were to happen to our computer or we were to write some bad code, we could always revert our code base to the previously saved version. So using source control at a bare minimum gives us a backup, which is nice to have. But above that, it also helps us work asynchronously with other engineers. So you could imagine a situation where you're building some feature in your app and somebody else is building another feature in your app. Those two features might be touching the same files of code, they might not. At some point in the future, we're gonna to wanna to take both of those features and merge them into the same code base. So when we have our project under version control, it's going to track all of the changes that are happening to our code base. It's gonna know this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, this file was added, this file was deleted, this line was changed. And this way, when we go to merge our feature or merge our changes with other people's code, Version control knows and can identify to us all of the differences between your version and the other version. And this way, when we go to actually merge our code, version control is going to point out the discrepancies between the two versions. It will tell us there's a conflict here and we need to resolve it in order to merge these two versions of the code base. So even if you haven't used version control before, it is absolutely a requirement. I will never build a project without using version control again. And I recommend you don't either. So this playlist is going to get you up to speed, everything you need to know, how to use Git, how to use source control, how to use GitHub. And at the end of the playlist, we'll wrap up with how do big teams really use this in a professional environment. Before we go and jump into the code, there's a couple things that I want to cover about what we're going to go over in this series. So in this series, I'm going to assume that you've never used Git before. We'll start with the basics. And then we're going to focus on getting you up to speed and getting you to be an expert as fast as possible. We're going to use GitHub for our remote repository. We're going to talk a little bit about that in the next video. But when we are using version control, we have this concept of remote and local repositories. Think of it as the remote version of your code and the local version of your code. So when we are writing code on our computer, it saves locally. And then eventually we want to push it up just like we were to put photos or something on the internet and put it into the cloud. We're going to do the same thing with our code base. We're going to save our changes locally and then push them up to the cloud in which we're going to use GitHub as our hosting service to host our repo on the internet. So we're gonna be pushing to GitHub and pulling our changes back down from GitHub. Now, every time we perform pushes and pulls and any kind of Git operations, we're gonna need some software to perform these operations. So in this series, we're gonna focus primarily on using Xcode to do all these operations we're also going to use a third-party GUI, a Git user interface called Git Kraken. I'm going to talk a lot more about that in the next video, but these are just two tools to do all of our Git commands. The old school way of doing Git is through the terminal, actually opening up the terminal on your computer and writing those hardcore commands. But I'm not going to cover that in this video, frankly, because I never use that on a day-to-day -day basis. And ultimately, I think teaching that is going to slow you guys down to becoming experts at this. If anything, I would recommend learning how to use Git first and then learning maybe how to use it in the terminal later. Because if anything, using it in the terminal is gonna be harder than using a literally a user interface for doing the same thing. So this series, we're gonna use GitHub, we're gonna use Xcode, and we're gonna use Git Kraken. And we'll talk a whole lot about those three in the next video. Just to call out a couple of things that we're gonna cover in this playlist, we're going to cover commits, staging, unstaging, stashing, pushing, pulling, cherry picking, merging, rebasing, pull requests. We're gonna talk about code owners, git ignore files, readmes on GitHub, how to perform releases on GitHub, a bunch of other things. And then we're gonna wrap up the course learning how to use Git flow 
basically how to use version control in a professional environment. I am so excited to take you guys on this journey because I remember not that long ago not knowing this and I remember how difficult it was to learn. And once you learn this and get comfortable and become pretty good at it, I promise you it will 10x your productivity as a software engineer. Even though it doesn't actually affect how good we're writing code, it is significantly going to affect our overall productivity and speed in writing code. Because once you get a good grip, it's gonna be very easy to know when to branch, when to merge, when to build a feature, how to merge that feature back in. And once you get into that flow, you will literally move 10 times faster. Before we wrap up, just a quick reminder. Firstly, uh, if you have not hit the subscribe button, please do so. This is free educational content. Secondly, the full course list for all of the courses and the order to watch them in is on our website at www.swiftful-thinking.com. And thirdly, we do have a Discord. So if you get stuck, if you need help with your code, so jump in our Discord. I'll link it below, and chances are somebody in there will be able to help you out. So strap in, grab a coffee. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. That's all from me. My name is Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.